I'll get right to the point, Robin. No use wasting a lot of time on this. I want you off this campus. I was here first. Ocean is my school. And now it's mine, too. I think you'll like it better at Wilson. I don't think so. I like it here just fine. You're not staying, I can promise you that. Leave now and we won't have to get bloody about it. It's up to you. Forget it. Welcome to Hello, This is the Doom Show. I am Richard. Folks, we're getting witchy up in this hitchy, up in this house, the witch house. (laughs) Uh, We are talking about Midnight Offerings, which uh, aired on February 27th, 1981. But folks, that's not what's important. What's important is I have a very special guest co-host on the show. It's Lietta. Hi. Hi. Lietta is totally here to talk about this movie with us because we're going to get weachy because um lietta once said to me i'm going to make you my weach no i never said that (laughs) you probably Uh, dislike that line (laughs) that's the best of of all the lines in that movie that's the best line in the movie (laughs) this movie was directed by rod holcomb and written by juanita bartlett I don't know why I said Bartlett like that. Uh, we'll talk about them in a moment. Uh, I could not find a proper trailer for this thing, because it was a TV movie, and I couldn't find a 1981 commercial for it. I was really hoping for one of those, but I found two commercials for it, very short ones from the 90s that are very wonderful, with that voice, to get you excited about the movie. So I grabbed those. Here's not one, but two TV teasers. I know what you are, and I know what you can do. This year, Ocean High School isn't hosting the usual homecoming celebration. Watch a whole night of horror beginning with Midnight Offerings, Tuesday at 8 p.m. on TNT. It's happening again, Daddy. The most popular girl in school is a real witch. Midnight Offerings, coming up next. The October movies, Be Afraid. Okay, so of course, we're going to spoil this thing. We're going to talk about it. And big shocker, I couldn't find even a VHS. I found a VHS uh, in Dutch, but it wasn't funny to translate into English. Like, I was going to translate it into English, but it didn't didn't make me laugh. It was just a big pain in the butt. So I said, screw it. So I'm going to trust good old IMDB's plot synopsis for this. So here we go. Vivian has magic powers. She doesn't hesitate to save her boyfriend David from failing in school by murdering teachers. However, David has gotten tired of her and is putting his charm on a new girl in school. Is that what you call it? Oh, Robin. Oh, is that is that like pinning somebody? <laughs> he gave her a charm? Yep. He, he was putting his charm on her, like, like pinning it to her sweater, right? He baked her a cake. And instead of giving her the charms for the charm bracelet, he baked them in the cake and then she ate the charms. No, that's like 12th night cake. You bake the charms in the cake. And then when you find them, you get lucky. But what if you don't find them until you've already digested the cake? Then you don't get so lucky. (laughs) You get horrible stomach pains. Robin discovers that she also has magic powers and it comes to a mental showdown between the two women over (laughs) over David. That wasn't acting. I actually choked on his name. 
That's what I get for questioning his charm ability. Rod Hol Holcomb, Holcomb, he didn't do a lot of horror stuff, but he did a show. He, he directed some episodes of a show that we watched one time called Moonlight. It was about the vampire. Oh, the vampire detective. Yes. I love that show. Yes. He produced a few and directed a few of those. Uh, Juanita Bartlett, uh, she was a big time writer, producer for TV. She wrote a ton of episodes of the Rockford Files, as well as uh, TV movies for the Rockford Files. Uh, she wrote some episodes of Greatest American Hero, and she co-wrote the teleplay for something we watched that was something we watched called Planet Earth, where John Saxon and his crew wakes up in the future from being uh, underground and they're in their like ATV oh, wow. vehicle traveling around in the future and, and women and men are like there's a war of the sexes and men are slaves yeah planet oh, earth wow. <laughs> I that had know. magic wands in it <laughs> I don't know if that was a look of rec recognition or terror <laughs> <sighs> so this opens with uh, we get some uh, classic music some nice wonderful tv music as you get in the early 80s and a black cat and i said i'm in i love this already and uh as soon as uh, our our star here uh vivian starts casting spells i said dude this teen witch prequel is dark bro dark and confusing <laughs> but vivian is played by melissa sue anderson uh, i know her best from happy birthday to me but people who aren't me might notice that she was also in, like, every episode of Little House on the Prairie, which I have erased from my mind, except for the evil blonde girl with the curly cues. I remember the blonde girl. I do not remember almost anything else about it. Oh, wait, was she supposed to be the main brunette? She was the elder, the elder sister? Okay, I do remember her. And I only remember her because Little House on the Prairie was one of my grandmother's favorites. Nice. So if the TV was going to come on, it was going to have something like that on. And we wouldn't want it any other way. I love her in Happy Birthday to Me because I think she was trying to do the breakout of her typecasting from Little House. So she did uh, this and Happy Birthday to Me where she played. <laughs> oh, spoilers. Mr. Hildebrand is, is a teacher. But there was so much with the introductory scene. Oh, please. Let's do it. Because it goes on and on, this spell casting. And what I noticed, because I love witches. I mean, full disclosure. <laughs> I love everything about them. <laughs> what I noticed is that this, this spell casting in what looked like a closet was mixing Satanism and more traditional Wicca symbolism and deities and some voodoo as well. And she was calling all the gods. She called Bacchus. Like, what is Bacchus <laughs> supposed to do for her when she's cursing somebody? Make them drunk? I really didn't get that part. <laughs> well, she did kill the teacher by making him wreck his car. Maybe she made him, like, have a DUI to death. <laughs> <laughs> She's killing uh, a teacher named Mr. Hildebrand at her school, at her high school, because he was failing her, her boyfriend. Her Well, she thinks he's her boyfriend, but he thinks she's his ex because he's done with her. We'll talk about him in a second. I also wrote in my notes that other events happen. I don't remember what that refers to. So stuff happened that was witchy that she caused. That's pretty uh, insightful, I think. Because it's alluded that something kind of happened with David. Yeah, he got into drugs and alcohol. Her, her boyfriend, ex-boyfriend. And that he knew. Yeah. And was like creeped out. So maybe those other events didn't actually happen in the storyline, because we pretty quickly go from the teacher's death to the in-class scene, yeah. where the principal walks in and tells the class. It jumps right in. Yeah. One thing I really like is uh, Vivian's pal uh, refers to Dave as a Lodi, like L-O-A-D-I-E, like that's a, a drug-taking person who gets loaded. He's a Lodi. I'm like, I'd rather be the loader than the Lodi, if you know what I mean, buddy. Her pal David is played by uh, Patrick Cassidy, who the same year as the, speaking of being a Lodi, 
He was also in something called Angel Dusted from 1981, like one of those very special episodes stretched out to a full-length movie about drugs. But, more importantly, he was in the short-lived Dirty Dancing TV series, which I did not know existed, but now I kind of want to see. That sounds uh, intriguingly terrible. (laughs) Are you ready for the turn-on show of the season? Oh, God. Maybe they'll uh, make it dirtier with less dancing. (laughs) Uh, But he's beautiful. He's got the short shorts. Yeah, I do have a note here that just says, no, the shorts. I think they're shorter than most of the shorts on campus nowadays. That's the thing. The men and men and ladies have switched. That's the problem is that the the guys should keep wearing their short shorts and the ladies should wear trousers, bro. Although that note comes after one where I questioned, when exactly was it that bonfires at high schools were discontinued? <laughs> because never in my high school days... Or the high school days of my older brothers, to my knowledge, have I heard of a bonfire happening? It just, it didn't happen. I know it happened when my parents were in high school. Mm. And I I wonder what it was that stopped those bonfires from happening. Oh, I know. That Dean R. Kuntz book where the evil people stuck a whole box of dynamite in the, uh, the high school bonfire and blew up everybody. That might have been in Twilight Eyes, I think. I don't remember. Anyway, (laughs) I don't know. I read that a long time ago. There's a moment where uh, she talks to her science teacher, where Vivian talks to her science teacher, and he and her discuss uh, how she was supposed to help him induce pregnancy in rats so they could dissect them. And I said, cool, dude. I don't want to do that. (laughs) Yeah, science classes don't do that anymore either. Oh, my God. Of course. It has now been exposed that the mascot of this high school is a goat. goat. <laughs> you are begging for satanic shenanigans when your freaking mascot's a goat. Oh, no. So, Vivian, we get to see her death stare where she just glares at someone and you know they're going to have troubles. But we really see it kick in when Robin shows up, the new girl at school. Robin is played by Mary Beth McDonough. Her famous thing was the Waltons. Good night, Good night Jim. Jim. <laughs> Not only was she in the Waltons, but she was in all the TV movies and all the reunions and everything. She was, um, as the fan groups of the Waltons refer to the people who were on the show as Waltoids. I don't believe that. I don't either. Uh, But I know her best from a little movie called Mortuary with uh, a young Bill Paxton, which, 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 which could be coming to this podcast soon, Brad. So Robin shows up, um, her mother is, her mother's dead. Yes. She's living with her father. You know, she's the new kid in school. And... It might have already been alluded that Robin is the new kid in school because they moved to start fresh. Yes. To get away from something they left behind. Um, her dad is, is named Charles and he's played by, uh, Peter McLean, uh, MacLean or MacLean from uh, a little movie called Squirm that is, uh, the most disgusting horror movie about worms to this day, Killer Worms. It still freaks me out. I do not own a copy of Worms. I enjoy the movie, but I cannot look at it. It's so freaky. But he played the sheriff in that movie. Uh, he was also in uh, Force 5, same year as this. And uh, he was in The Friends of Eddie Coyle, which is one of those movies that movie people like me are obligated to mention. I've never seen it. She instantly hits it off with David, um, and he's, you know, bemoaning his drug use uh, and, and his, his former drunkenness and, and wrecking the car and all this fun teenage stuff that he got into. They go to the beach, and you think he's going surfing, but they said, we don't have the budget for the surfing shots. So they just sit on the beach, and he bemoans the days when he could surf. And I wrote in my notes, I long for my surfing days, too, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm doing the, the devil horns at the microphone for some reason. <laughs> and of course, David's interest in Robin is the reason why Vivian gave her the death yes. stare. But yes. also of note is that apparently David's transgressions were big enough to make it front page news. <laughs> and Robin's dad does not like this guy showing up. 
instantly. He recognizes him. Yes. He's like, no, this is the kid from the newspaper. They're they're new in town, and he already knows. Like, they have it posted. Like, it's a recurring news item. <laughs> like, uh, Dave has a freaking The Lodi Times or some shit. <laughs> right now, I'm just trying to stay out of the white water and get to the beach, okay? Okay. We won't talk about Vivian. Hey, uh... Look, I'm sorry, I... I've been in a lousy mood lately. I, I didn't mean to take it out on you. You're not. Besides, you're my first friend. Without you, it might have taken me days to find the Pacific. Look, Robin, I don't, I don't think I'm the kind of friend you're looking for anyway. I think you are, Dave. I think we're both a couple of outsiders. It's kind of nice to know you're not out there all alone. Vivian is instantly back into her room, into her amazing altar black cloak, and her freaking familiar black cat is great. Our familiar, z plural, are, are kind of freaking out. Uh, Spasmo does not know what's happening. She's just staring at us like, you guys should record more because I'm terrified. And Gorgon's like, I don't care, I'm sleeping. So that's, that's the cat report. <laughs> Our cats are a couple of loadies. Vivian's upstairs doing her thing. Her mom is, like, on to this bullshit. Her oh, yeah, mom, mom, knows. mom knows what Vivian is up to. Her mom is played by Catherine Damon, which you instantly spotted. She was from Soap, which is a show we do not watch enough of. And I think it comes up a lot because, as a kid, I didn't understand it was a comedy. I just thought it was a literal soap opera, so now I love it. I didn't actually watch as much of Soap as I watched Benson, which is a spinoff of Soap. Yeah. I loved Benson. It was one of my favorite childhood shows. I think by the time I was around watching those TV shows, my dad, I know for sure, was totally over soap. <laughs> he had just had, like, saturation. He wasn't going to watch any anymore. He didn't want me to because that means it would be on in his house. But Benson was fine. <laughs> he was saturated with soap suds. <laughs> yes. I knew it. That Halloween episode of Soap we watched, that was amazing. That was so good. When uh, Blackula shows up. <laughs> that was so wonderful. I'm pretty sure it was Blackula. I'm not looking it up. I thought it was the Halloween... You mean the Halloween episode of Benson? Yeah. He didn't... He wasn't a vampire. He played the he devil. He was death. He was death. Yes, he was he death. Played... Yes, that was an amazing episode. He was the Blackula Weird devil death. Creepy. That was good. I enjoyed <laughs> it. But yeah, Mom... We'll find out why Mom is so like... Mmm. Stop being magic. Well, see, I got a hint here. So what, early on hint? in my notes... When Vivian comes downstairs and mom is asking her some pointed questions, but not really revealing a lot. And also when mom is interacting with dad, it becomes clear that Vivian is the youngest of seven daughters. Oh, shit. It immediately brought to mind the superstition about the seventh son of a seventh son, but I'd never heard of it being applied to daughters. <laughs> well, lo and behold, spoilers and all, this becomes very important in the rest of the movie. And I had to put it in here because I thought of it first. <gasps> oh. Sorry. Sorry to be that way. Man. Brutal. <laughs> <laughs> it's like figuring out a mystery when you're watching it. This is why you never do husband and wife shows, man. It's so satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> I've been witchy emasculated. <laughs> <laughs> so we see some of Robin's powers. And once again, I'm really frustrated with witch movies and witch things. Where they're just psychic powers. They're just telekinesis. Mm. Yes, they cast spells and all this stuff, but it always reverts to a battle between what I call the new mutants. Like, this is like just uh, Jean Grey powers for everybody. In that movie, The Covenant, all of the spells and everything just ends up being psychic powers throwing stuff. And yeah. the battle between Robin and Vivian in the shop class is just, it's like, it could be anything. It could just psychic battle war. It doesn't have to be witches at all. Although that is after. While Vivian's mom is kind of grilling her, Vivian and mom kind of have a semi-showdown. And it was very much like hearkening to the spell, which is another TV movie. Oh, yeah. Where, where mom and daughter are kind of testing out their metal. And it was not known until that time that mom had the powers too. Mm -hmm. Well, it becomes clear that Mom has let herself go because <laughs> because she could not beat her daughter in this in this semi standoff. Mom has let herself go. That's just sad. <laughs> 
At some point, we see Vivian in her cloak and, and witchy gear more closely, and you see that she's just doing like this crazy punk makeup, like uh, like she's getting ready to go to a freaking punk rock club or something. I love it. David tries to get Robin hip to the witchy business and starts to try to uh, encourage her to learn her powers so that she can fight Vivian, who's coming after her. Vivian is legit like, I'm going to kill you with my powers. Oh, yeah, and this is after the seventh daughter of a seventh daughter is confirmed by a friendly local witch. Oh, boy. Who figures out that Robin is also one. This character, this is one of those, hi, I'm here for one day of shooting. I'm going to interact with these two people in this house, in this set. Then we're all going to change our clothes, and we're going to interact with these people in this set again, and then I'm out of here, brother. This is uh, Emily Moore. Uh, played by Marion Ross from Frickin' Happy Days. Hey, I'm Fonzie. I'm on that new show about the 50s called Happy Days. It'll take you back to some really cool times. How <laughs> does that grab you? So watch it. Tuesday night, 8 o'clock, ABC, 7th Central. Hey! Oh, my God. And she's she's this guru witch who's going to teach Robin all that she needs in a very short amount of time because Robin has two days left to live, according to Vivian. Oh, and there's there's a moment where um, we see that Mrs. Moore, her skirt matches her chair. And I wrote in my notes, that's not a euphemism. <laughs> okay. Among Vivian's powers is, you know, her cat is her familiar, so she can kind of spy on people and stuff with her cat. And the cat will defend her. But the big thing she does in the best scene in the movie, and she frickin' turns into a crow. And as they're driving down the street in a frickin' Dave's badass Lodi van, the crow flies into the window and is attacking Dave while he's driving. And so there's this crazy sequence where they're frickin' all over the highway with the birds squawking at him and getting in his face. Oh man, it was so good. I have a trivia. Oh, bring it. It's not a movie trivia. So the friendly neighborhood witch calls Vivian a hectite witch. Oddly enough, though I love witches, I'd never heard of this before, so I had to go look it up. And there are three different definitions, like anything else in Webster's Dictionary. And the third definition means that it's someone with telekinetic powers. Oh, boy. That sort of ebb and flow in concert with the phases of the moon. They're usually born with a birthmark, and they can impart powers to others. They're considered true witches. Gotcha. And I say this with air quotes. So that's another part of the two days to live for Robin, is because the full moon is coming. At which point Vivian will be at, at the, the strongest of her powers. Oh. I just thought she was a heck tight witch, bro. <laughs> I don't know if that's a slang. You could make it one. <laughs> it's too late, I did it. At some point, Dave says, Super! but I don't know what, what it was referencing at all. Vivian's father is played by Gordon Jump of WKRP, which, In is, Cincinnati. which is fantastic show. One of the greatest uh, freaking sitcoms of all time. More important than that, though, his character's name is Sherm, like short for Shermacular. Or Sherman? Maybe Sherman. I like Shermacular. Uh, so we're going to fast forward to the end here. So, uh... Dad's uh, in the hospital. Yes, Dad's in the hospital. Uh, Vivian is using uh, Robin's sick daddy, and she's going to kill him if frickin' Robin doesn't meet her on the night where she's supposed to kill her at the school. So we go to the nice creepy school. Where the unlit bonfire is waiting. Yep, and it gets lit. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> but not before goat attack. <laughs> yes, she enlists the power of the goat. Like I said, get a nicer mascot. Get a rabbit. Well, but then you have magician problems. You can't... I've seen water shift down. Rabbits Ooh. are not nicer mascots. You can't get an owl either because of Harry Potter. So they have their big showdown, and Robin is not doing very good. She's about to get burned alive on the uh, the bonfire. And that's when Vivian's mom shows up and sells her out because I don't think she liked her daughter at all. Or she was scared of her. Well, Vivian did threaten to kill her during their semi-showdown in the kitchen before. It's just, it's just hormones. It's just hormones. In my notes, calling back to that, I do have a question about whether Tabitha ever rebelled like that against Samantha. 
Because we see Tabitha at the end of the show, but she's nowhere near teenage years. Nope. She could have. Yeah. Been really horrible and murderous to her parents. Yep. When you when you spoil dad by getting him that awesome job at the construction site, he will in turn spoil you and buy you a car you don't deserve because you're the daughter of Satan. Yeah, that's that, Vivian, not Tabitha. Maybe this is just an unlicensed continuation yeah. of Bewitched. It's a <laughs> it's a modern retelling <laughs> of the classic tale. Oh wait. Wait, Vivian's mom did give up her magic oh. to get married. Damn it. Ladies, never settle. <laughs> never settle. Uh, so Vivian and, uh, v- excuse me, Vivian's mom and Robin team up with their psychic carry powers to uh, to destroy Vivian by throwing her on the bonfire after this great moment, like this totally awesome moment where <laughs> Robin jumps away she jumps out of the the bonfire she just jumps out and i was hoping they would throw that sound effect from the uh, six million dollar man that would have blown my mind oh, i would have loved did they that. do motion trails on her jumping out no but they should have mm-hmm. she saw trails because teen <laughs> teen drug use so that's the entire plot of this movie. It's a very simple movie. It does not have a lot going on. Um, like, uh, I was reading, uh, Amanda Ray's book, uh, Don't Go in the House. I quickly peeked at her review of this and she said that a lot of this is just the teen drama, the back and forth with everything. But yeah, before we talk about how we like this one or not, let's have a commercial break. Big Mac, fillet your fish, quarter pounder french fries, icy coke, thick shakes, sundaes, and apple pies. A sing, a song with a fish, taste quarter pounder french fries. you can icy only coke, find in one place. Sundays, McDonald's calls you deserve a break today. <laughs> Big Mac, fillet your fish, quarter pounder french fries, icy coke, thick shakes, sundaes, and apple pies. And the cup ran away with the spoon. What makes this land terrific? We got something more. Broadway lights, disco nights, something more. And a brand new soft drink like you never had before. Brand new something more. It's so luscious cake, they're gonna say something more. Brand new root beer, something more. Sugar-free Ramblin' too. Every day in the United States, 50 people are murdered. Few of the cases are ever solved. Only the best reach the 6 o'clock news. For TV reporter Tony Sokoloff, this man could be the key to her most important story. Or her last. Hello, police. William Hurt, Sigourney Weaver, Christopher Plummer, Eyewitness, rated R. Starts Friday, March 6th at Avco Westwood Pacific Hollywood in a select theater near you. How do you like your hush puppies? I like my hush puppies when I'm spreading a little cheer. Cause anything goes with hush puppies. I like my hush puppies when I'm advancing my career. When you're stepping out, feeling fine, and it shows. Put your feet in hush puppies, and anything goes. I like my hush puppies when I'm playing Mountaineer. Anything goes with hush puppies. Especially you, my dear. So I've grabbed a whole bunch of 1981 commercials. So I'm going to drop some sweet commercials in here. I don't even know what they are yet. Man, we need to watch a movie where you can put an Ovaltine commercial in. (laughs) In 81? People are still drinking Ovaltine? No, we need to watch a movie that was out with Ovaltine. So we we could do that movie. Like, we'd do Bell, Book, and Candle, right? They would have had Ovaltine commercials then. We need to watch things where we're Geritol. We'll get our Geritol. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, Lieta, how did you like Midnight Offerings? I liked it. It was fun. The the weird, weird mix of all witch aside, which I found really funny, because there were, there were references to legitimate witchcraft practices of various types. It was just, I've never known of them to be mixed up in such a way. <laughs> I mean, to be praying in front of an altar with... Baphomet, the goat head in the inverted pentacle, and calling on the god of the Wichko religion, along with Hecate and Bacchus, <laughs> is just a little odd, and nothing I've ever seen before, but kind of funny as well. 
Right? Why not? <laughs> I mean, it's a lot better than making stuff up. She was hedging her bets. Yeah. She's just, just casting the net wide. She's asking for powers from, from Buddha. The... I didn't actually see, see a no, Buddha I on didn't. that altar. No. I'm just kidding. <laughs> just about everything else, but not Buddha. <laughs> he was the one. He's like, I'm left out. I, I was the one who could have helped you, bitch. Well, it was the 80s, right? Yep. Yeah, Buddha, Buddha wasn't everywhere until 2000s or something, right? <laughs> oh, that's, my... that's when you get the, uh, earth trading co's in the malls and things oh, like that yes yes mm, patchouli burgers patchouli burgers oh fuck. <laughs> we raised them in our victory garden <laughs> was it victory garden yes oh i don't know god we should watch now that I'm confused. Let's, let's just watch easy a tonight <laughs> fuck it oh i'm drinking let's do it <laughs> i i really really enjoyed this this was for lack of a better term magical uh, I bet this freaked some parents out when this came out because this is right around that satanic panic scare in the eighties where people were just terrified. Scare. The scare. Well, yeah, I know you have a th- you have a thing. I lived in Texas. It wasn't a scare. We had cults that came down. We had a, like a, a season for cults. Every now and then, we'd be told to make sure we didn't leave our pets outside because the cults were active. And then another season when we were told not to leave our pets outside because the coyotes were coming down the green belt. So you had two seasons where you couldn't let your cat out the back door because it would disappear and probably wind up dead somewhere. Everyone had goldfish. No, I mean, like, not actual scared, like the scare of paranoia. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this must have freaked some people out. I love that. Um, I think that uh, it treats black magic like an after school special a little bit. Uh, This one is a little scarier than some of the others, especially with the imagery of the altar and everything. She's got a badass altar. Like, it's it's pretty tasty and and freaky looking and, like, looks like it belongs in a much scarier movie than... It leans towards satanic and Satan worship. Not not the the Church of Satan that we know today, but the one that is terrifying in movies. Uh, like Summer of Fear and uh, what was the other one we watched? Uh, the Spell we just mentioned. You know, they have freaky parts to them, but this one just has that layer of the, added by that imagery that's really good. Uh, this think... this wasn't an Aaron Spelling production, so it was actually good. No, I think I think the biggest difference <clears throat> in comparing this with the Spell, which I I find it really easy to compare the two, is that there's a level of commitment. So when you have the altar and you're making those prayers, you're committing to getting <laughs> this thing that you want. In the spell, it was just learning to use these powers, you know? There wasn't anything more than, ooh, I hate that girl. I wish whatever. There was no altar built. There was no, like, commitment to get this thing done. In in Midnight Offerings, Vivian was committed. Yeah. I think she had a real human skull, too. And I was like, uh, where did you get that, little lady? I love the early 80s is all heck. The sh- the aforementioned short shorts, the big hair, the shoulder pads, they were great. Uh, serious, but not too serious. Cheesy, and I love the cast. This cast had two little Easter eggs in the form of uh, people. <laughs> we had uh, Lily, who was someone. I don't know who Lily was. And uh, she was played by Dana Kimmel. Of Friday the 13th, Part 3, and Sweet 16, the slasher from 1983. And we both looked for her, but we did not see her. Vanna White. Yeah. Young Vanna White was in this, but I didn't know this. She was in Graduation Day, that sports slasher one. That's just insane. Now I have to look for her in that. That's great. So, dude, we did it. We talked about Midnight Offerings. We did. We spoiled it. We ruined it. Mm-hmm. People who love it hate it now. That's my fault. That's not on you. You made th- everything better. Oh, thanks. But, Lietta, we're going to have you back on. Well, I am. I am undertaking the ultimate witch movie list. That's a lot of movies. It was more than I initially expected. Because when you think of witch movies, a few come to mind. Some which aren't really enjoyable or focused on the witches. mm It's kind of hard to find them (laughs) when you want, like, focus on witches, not disgusting. Okay, I got it. We'll watch Easy A, then we'll watch Teen Witch. (laughs) Boom, there's a double feature. Well, thank you. Thank you for joining me. 
My pleasure. I know where you live. You do? No. Oh, okay. I was bluffing. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, thanks for listening. Uh, Lieta will be back, and I, I'm sorry, but I'll be back. Bye. Bye. This is the Doom Show is a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network. Please check out the other podcasts on legionpodcasts.com. If you'd like more Hello, This is the Doom Show, go to hellodoomshow.podomatic.com or go to doomedmoviethon.com for the archives. If that's still not enough, go to at doomedmoviethon on Twitter. You can write in to Hello, This is the Doom Show. Use the email doomedmoviethon at gmail.com. Doom Show episodes are available on record and 8-track cassette. If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcast, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Mental Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick Six Movies, the podcast by the cemetery, the podcast on Haunted Hill, the Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which vs. the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.